Welcome to the third episode of Total Wipeout Number System. In this series, I give each finalist from a certain series a number in correspondence to how I think they will do in the Champion Special, pretending that it hasn't premiered yet. The higher a competitor's number is, the better I think they will do in the finale. After I go over my pick for each number, I will reflect on how they did after the finale has happened. Since the concept of the series may be confusing, I will state again that this is only pretending that I have never seen the Champion Special, but that I did see the previous ones. That means the prediction would have been made between May 8 and May 15, 2010, as that's the time between Series 3 Episode 7 and Series 3 Episode 8, the finale. This is part 1 of 3 for this episode, where I will be going over numbers 1 through 10 of my predictions. My pick for number 1 is Muslim Man, meaning I think he will have the least chance of succeeding in the Champion Special based on his results from Series 3 Episode 4. In the qualifier, it is assumed that he failed every obstacle, and he ended up with a mediocre time of 3 minutes 49 seconds, getting 10th place. On Crash Mountain, Muzz ran right to the middle of his first attempt and got first place. In the first round of Dizzy Dummies, Muzz rushed to, out to the Tippy Table Maze, which he completed in two attempts and got second place. In the second round, he was again the first to attempt the obstacle, and again completed the Donut Run in two attempts and got second place. In the Wipe Zone, Muzz went very slowly and failed every obstacle, getting to the buzzer with a time of 7 minutes 36 seconds and third place. Even though Muzz didn't clear a single obstacle in the time rounds, he did show to be impressive in the multiplayer rounds. However, to get there, Muzz would need to pass the qualifier, which is very unlikely to happen. My pick for number 2 is Cheerleader Andy from episode 2. In the qualifier, he failed every obstacle and got a middling time of 3 minutes 7 seconds, which was 10th place. He then, surprisingly, ran right to the middle of Crash Mountain and got 1st place. Andy got 3rd place in the first round of Dizzy Dummies, but he never cleared the blueberries in the 2nd round since another competitor withdrew before he could, letting him go to the weapon zone. In the final round, Andy failed every obstacle besides for the balance beam, like many others, and got a time of 3 minutes 53 seconds, which provided him 3rd place. Except for the Crest Mountain Traverse, Andy didn't show to be a very strong competitor, and there isn't a high chance to see him pass the qualifier. However, if he does, he could maybe cross Crest Mountain and make it to the 3rd round. I am giving number 3 to Eggy Dez from Series 3 Episode 2. In the qualifier, he failed every single obstacle and got an average time of 3 minutes 6 seconds, getting ninth place. On Crash Mountain, Dez was the last to qualify, running across the spoon to get 5th place. In the first round of Dizzy Dummies, he cleared the tippy tail maze in 2 tries and got 4th place. In the second round, Dez was the only competitor to complete the blueberries since another competitor retired from the competition and the remaining competitors automatically advanced. In the wipeout zone, he only cleared one of the 4 obstacles, but went much faster than he did in the qualifier and got a time of 2 minutes 59 seconds, which was enough to win the episode. Despite winning this episode, Dez showed that he couldn't clear many obstacles and wasn't incredibly fast. He was adequate at the multiplayer rounds, but getting 5th on Crash Mountain means it's unlikely he would pass in the finale. However, if he can step up his game in the heat of the champion special, similarly to how he did in the Wipeout Zone, he has a chance to make it to the second round. I am giving number 4 to D.I. Dandy from episode 1. In the qualifier, Dandy failed every obstacle besides for the second set of the last Plankas, and got a decent time of 2 minutes 35 seconds, getting 4th place. On Crash Mountain, he was able to make it to the center by crawling on the spoon slowly, getting 3rd place. In the first round of Dizzy Dummies, he hesitated to attempt the blob, but when he did, he beat it in only one try and got 4th place. In the second round, he took 2 attempts to finish the crazy beams, and got 2nd place. In the final round, Danny struggled immensely, failing everything except for the balance beam, and got a time of 5 minutes 55 seconds, which was 3rd place. While Danny performed pretty good, his performance shows that he couldn't keep up with the higher level competitors that he would face in the finale. However, he can potentially get to Crash Mountain in the finale if he goes a little bit faster. My choice for number 5 is Take That Alfie from episode 5. In the qualifier, he failed every obstacle, even though his attempts on the heavy bag beam and the big red balls were not that bad. He finished the course with an average time of 2 minutes 59 seconds, which was 7th place. On Crash Mountain, he got 4th place, got 2nd round in the first round of Dizzy Dummies, and third in the second round. In the wipeout zone, Alfie failed every obstacle but the balance beam, like many others, and got an average time of 3 minutes 15 seconds, getting third place. Alfie displayed that he was pretty good, but he never showed to be a big threat. My pick for number 6 is Joystick David from episode 7. He failed every obstacle in the qualifier, and got an okay time of 2 minutes 54 seconds, seventh place. In the second round, David was 6 to get through Crash Mountain, and by sheer luck was able to get through it without being in the top 5, as this was the only episode with the Dreadmill instead of Dizzy Dummies. He faced Rocco John in the Dreadmill, and he was able to outrun him. 
However, this may have been due to John's wrecking ball being lower, a fate suffered by another competitor, Speedy Sean. In the weapon zone, David cleared the first two obstacles but failed the crazy sweeper and the Tarzan swing. Even with these fails, David went fast and got a pretty good time of 2 minutes 21 seconds, which is second place. David didn't show extraordinary skills in this episode, but in the final round he proved that he was a force to be reckoned with. I chose Stretchy Nix from episode 2 for number 7. In the qualifier, Nix was impressively able to clear the sucker punch, the bigger balls, and the tightrope, but went abnormally slow and got a time of 3 minutes 11 seconds, which was 12th place and only 4 seconds from elimination. She then got 3rd in Crash Mountain, before being the first to clear the tippy table maze in the second round of Dizzy Nuggies. In the next round, she wasn't able to clear the blueberries since another contestant retired from the competition. In the weapon zone, Nix cleared 2 of the 4 obstacles, but at a better pace than she did in the qualifier and got a time of 3 minutes 15 seconds, which was 2nd place. Nix was skilled at crossing obstacles, but was average in the other categories. This being said, she would need to speed up in the champion special to make it past the first round. My pick for number 8 is precisely from episode 3. In the qualifier, Lee cleared the break in the face and recovered quickly from his fails to get a good time of 2 minutes 11 seconds, which was 2nd place. In the second round, he got 2nd place, just seconds away from being first, getting to the center of Crash Mountain on his feet. Lee then got third in the first round of Dizzy Dummies by getting across the pyramid maze. In the second round, he got first by motivating himself to win for his children. In the weapon zone, Lee got through the rapid climb but failed everything else, even failing the last obstacle twice. Despite decent recovery speed, he ended up with a time of 4 minutes 2 seconds, which was third place by almost 2 full minutes. Lee was somewhat fast, but he got unlucky in the weapon zone. If he can keep up his determination for the finale, he has a chance to do pretty good. I'll give number 9 to Crime Scene James who competed in episode 4. In the qualifier, James almost became the first competitor to ever clear the crazy keys, but he failed the first set at the very end. He then also beat the sucker punch, but failed the last two obstacles. He got a time of 2 minutes 17, which was the fastest of the day by over 20 seconds. On Crash Mountain, he got third place by dashing across the runway. Strangely, from this point on, he seemed to lose his energy. He struggled to get past the tippy table maze and got fourth place in the first round of Dizzy Dummies. In the second round, he got the last qualifying spot again, third place. In the weapon zone, he failed everything but the balance beam, and his sapped energy caused him to get a slow time of 5 minutes 18 seconds, which gave him second place. Even though James had won the qualifier, his stamina throughout the day seemed to diminish. While he has a relatively high chance of making it to the second round, it isn't so likely that he'd get much farther in the competition. I'll give a number 10 to Chocolate Cody Chris from episode 4. He was able to clear the swing thing in the qualifier and got a decent time of 2 minutes 59 seconds, 3rd place. Chris then got 2nd place in the Crash Mountain, which he ran across. In the first round of Dizzy Dummies, Chris got through the tippy table maze with the determination and got 3rd. In the second round, he got 1st place by cleaning the donut run on his first attempt. In the weapon zone, he cleared every obstacle except for the balance beam, but did so faster than the other competitors with a time of 3 minutes 55 seconds, which gave him the victory. Chris was pretty good, and he showed his speed and a little bit of skill. I'd say that he has around a 50% chance of getting to the first round, but getting farther isn't likely. In the next part of this episode, I will go through number 11 through number 21.